Hello, my name is Raj Singh, uh, and I run the process of business at Marvel. Uh, welcome to our presentation. I'm going to talk about distributed and cloud brand solutions that we're offering to 5G marketplace. Marvel has been innovating in the 5G space since the beginning of the, of, of, of the standard five or six years ago. And today, we're very pleased to tell you, as we previously announced, that both Samsung and Nokia use our technology for the 5G networks. And then we have new um, engagements with Facebook and with Fujitsu and, and also with others. And here, we're not only delivering the, the baseband technology, we also deliver radio head technology, switching technology, connectivity with optical and copper, as, as well as um, the L2 transport and backhaul connect connectivity. And as you can see, a number of people have announced uh, using us, Jitsu has announced using our processors in their 5G radio networks for Japanese operators, Nokia and Samsung have, have, have announced uh, and, and, and participated in news where we, we, we discussed the, their, their use of our 5G technology. In many cases, this is custom technology. In some cases, this is standard products that we're, we're offering up. But we have a large and growing portfolio of both silicon, software, and, and reference uh, hardware that allows our customers to provide very innovative solutions to the market in a very timely manner and drives the, the, the ecosystem for coverage. Now, Marvel has not just been doing this recently. We've been doing this for 15 plus years. Uh, I've been at Marvel slash Caviar for 12 or 13 years of that. Um, we're the number one in merchant silicon in the 5G marketplace today. Uh, there are people, of course, who are doing their own silicon, silicon in a you know, vertical integration. But for merchant silicon, we are the number, number one provider. We've shipped, uh, by our best count, over 100 million units since we, we started this journey in wireless infrastructure. And about 2.2 billion people are connected to networks that use Marvel Silicon and Marvel software to, 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 to process data, to move data, to connect people who were previously perhaps poorly connected or unconnected. Um, and that's a, that's a great testament to our technology. It's a great testament to what we've achieved over a period of time where, where large, iconic brand name world companies rely on us to produce silicon and, and, and solutions uh, to, to, to build their systems into part of the world's 5G networks. If you look at what offerings we have, we go everywhere from the antenna, the radio unit, to, to whether it's massive MIMO or traditional radio air, and that includes mobile edge computing where you're running microservices at the edge of the far edge of the network, at the radio edge of the network, all the way to the near edge, which can be any combination of of virtualized RAM, we'll talk a little bit about that. Could be a traditional blade-based chassis thing which you see on the upper portion of the slide. And all the way to the far end where you see, you see um, multiple people in, in web scalers and hyperscalers wanting to be in that market and using PCI boards. And we're very prevalent in that as well. So whatever the topology of the network, whatever the use case that our customers want to deploy, in, in those networks, well, all the way from the far edge to the near edge to the ra 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 radio antennas, we are providing silicon and solutions for our customers. If you look at open RAM, which is very prevalent in the, in the news in, in recent time, two things are, are quite obvious. One is that there's a disaggregation of the RAM. We we'll talk about why that's happened and why that's important. But that disaggregation happened for other technical reasons and out of necessity, and we we'll explain that. But it also led to innovations first with, with MCORD and XRAN, and then eventually with the Open RAN Alliance, which, which speaks to um, a desire in the case of operators to have um, interoperability between DUs and RUs, uh, between DUs and CUs from multiple vendors. It's historically, a single vendor has provided the base station, the radio head, whatever control mechanisms, all, as well as all the, the core network, so that started splintering a little, little bit. Now, of course, if, if you want to do this, then somebody has to take responsibility for managing the, the, the integration, and there's a new and growing number of system integrators who are taking on, on that challenge. There is a pull from the operators wanting open RAM, 
um, where, where there is a, a true interoperability between, between systems. So you could take a deal from of vendor ABC and an IU from vendor XYZ, and they would all happily play together. And the ORAN Alliance aims to do that. There is, for various geopolitical reasons, a push from, from governments around the world by taking away certain vendors' equipment and replacing it with equipment uh, from more, perhaps, what they believe to be more trusted vendors. Uh, and that, that's another push to, for open RAN and ORAN. Of course, this does give a lot of network flexibility. Not every vendor may have every kind of radio head or every kind of uh, flexibility in TU or CU, and, and if you can mix and match it, it drives more innovation. Certainly, the, 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 the potential for reduced uh, total cost of ownership or reduced cost. And it, within that innovation, it provides new services and applications and, and hopefully increased competition. But it doesn't, it's not without risks. There's, you have to be now able to meet the performance requirement that the, the current generation of base stations and radio heads and CUs do. And, and of course, the reliability. The telcos around the world are famous for wanting five nines of reliability, which means you know, it's 99.999999% uptime. Uh, of course, you have to meet price and the, and the, the, the invest, investment ROI has to make sense as well. All these are challenges that the industries is, is moving forward to, to meet those challenges. Now, why did this happen? Well, first of all, the reason for the split happened after 4G. Up to 4G, the various amounts of integration was all, here's my base station, there's my radio head, there's an optical cable going from one to the other. And as you can see, a single sector of LTE at 20 megahertz would have a 2T, 2R, maybe a 44R, and do about seven gigabits bits per second of traffic, which is up and down to total. Now, at the backhaul of about 225 megabits, this is all very reasonable if you do an optical cable, the backhaul you could even do on, 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 on ethernet. But when you get to 5G, for TDD in particular, the channelization went from 20 to 100. That's 5X increase. Oh, there's a problem. And the antennas went from two to 32 or even four, 64. And even at 32, we were at 314 gigabytes. But that would necessitate an average optical cable or a CIPRI interface running analog IQ data up and down is, is about eight or nine, or maybe it's 16. But to get 300, you need 10, 20 of these cables for a single radio head, it's not, just not practical. And the backhaul jumped from 225 to seven gigabytes. Uh, that, you know, these are, these are startling numbers and the, in, and the industry body that makes the standard three PP body said, oh, this obviously is problematic. Let's go find ways of, of reducing the amount of traffic because we can't come up with standards that, that support this high traffic. And the, the way this worked was the, 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 the desire was to go create a new front hall um, which was packet-based, Ethernet-based, which had, was much easier to implement than an analog CIPRI, um, uh, 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 common uh, public uh, radio interface, which has been prevalent for many years in the industry. But in, more importantly, a, a significant amount of the upfront processing was then left to be done inside the radio. Radio had historically have been analog devices with, with, with some amount of control and logic to do trimming and deal with the shift of things. Here, it's doing part of the baseband processing in the radio head. The result of that is twofold. One, you're sort of sending analog data, you're now sending digital data down, down, down the pipe. Two, a large amount of data that you're getting from antenna, antennas is actually thrown away in the first two or three phases of, of the pipeline anyway. And that throwing away is happening and that sweep is happening in the radio head, not at the other end of the, of, of the D. So you can notice that instead of having 314 gigabits per second at 100 megahertz, that's now being reduced to 25 because a bunch of that data has, has, been, has been thrown away. The middle interface is, start, is, is 7 gig, which is perfectly reasonable for, 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 for uh, Ethernet interface. And the, the, the interface to the network core is also 7 gig. So you can see a very significant production once this happened, people said, ah, well, if this is happening, the Oran Alliance, which came into being because of a necessity, said, ah, let's go define the interface between the RU and the DU. 
such that our operator partners, our operator customers, and the vendors can realistically interoperate between those two things and have I use from any vendor they choose with do use from any other vendor they choose and they should all happily play together. And that was what started out as a necessity of the split became a really good methodology for doing, for providing openness in that interface and providing interoperability and all the goodness that we talked about in the previous, previous slides. Now, what do we do? We, as we said earlier, we provide solutions to the far end, we provide solutions for the near edge and for the radio edge. And in each case, we're providing, whether it's standard uh, chassis-based things, and there are a number of customers who want to use that, or virtualized um, uh, the DUs with, with using PCI cards in, 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 in COT servers, or doing them at the far edge. We are providing both silicon reference designs and uh, enabling software to, to, uh, to apply across the platform to do to, to, to do the appropriate methodologies for our customers. Now, if you look at what, we, what is happening, if you look at the dis disaggregated sit uh, situation for, for 5G, the disaggregation is happening at two levels, CU to DU, DU to RU. And as we said earlier, this was necessitated by the amount of bandwidth that was required. But what then became prep obvious was as you did that, the ORAN interface, which specifies not just what the pro what the protocol is, but what the messaging is, what the interface is, what the signaling is, and then does it have some other things about timing and compression and decompression data. So your seven gig can get, become two or three. This allows whether it's a, a VRAN or a standard chassis based system to be ORAN compliant. So you could have a mixture of server based systems as well as chassis based systems or even pizza box, single one use systems that could all be ORAN compliant can all be deployed with a multitude of different uh, 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 RUs. And you can see that we provide silicon both for the lower L1 of the radio head, the baseband processing for the upper, upper L1, as a digital unit or in the, in the offline, or and in the central unit for L2 and the backhaul. And if it's a VRAN card, we're very pleased that we've taken some very innovative steps in VRAN uh, where we're providing a, a single piece of silicon that has both integrated front hall, so you no longer need a front hall switch, and it has full inline processing of, of, of the L1. This has lots of benefits, not least of which is the number of hops going from a front hall switch to the to the core CPU coming back to the offload and going back to the CPU and then back to the front hall, which is at least five, maybe as many as seven, becomes a single hop in and out to the, to the central processor and, and, and back. Reduce latency, significantly increased capacity and much easier to implement advanced techniques like carrier aggregation or hop and, 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 and others. And if you look at our wireless portfolio, you see in the radio unit, we have silicon for massive MIMO processing, front hall connectivity, the physical Ethernet 5, DFE, RF interface faces. We have in the, in the DU, we of course have baseband processing uh, as well, connectivity and switching and five. We can do custom ASICs for our customers. We can also provide L2 transfer process. Then in the central unit, of course, Ethernet remains a mainstay of our offering. We offer a significant amount of L2 processing and L3 control, as well as backhaul connectivity. So all in all, as I said earlier in the presentation, you truly have an end-to-end -end digital solution for 5G in our, in our systems. So if you look at our software, all our software, all our silicon is virtualized, whether it's on-prem, cell side, on the edge, in the metro cloud, and all of it, runs fully virtualized, whether it's using um, our silicon for AIML, for baseband, for crypto engines in the, in, in, in the, in the higher layers, whatever uh, proposed is using, you can run dockers, containers, virtual machines, and you can move them between the various parts of the thing very seamlessly. And it's a very effective way our customers use a single layer of common software to move, move uh, uh, 
workloads between the appropriately sized um, devices. And if you look at what we do, not all radio networks are created equal. There is, of course, cloud RAN, pure cloud RAN, there's a hybrid cloud RAN, which relies on a combination of, 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 of uh, DUs, where the L2, lower L2 is inside the DU itself. Cloud RAN, of course, is assuming that a whole bunch of it is, 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 is happening in the server and the rest is in the radio head. And just, then just a pure distributed RAN where, where you have a pure, pure G, G B um, uh, running L1, L2, L3. All of these can be encompassed by a variety of silicon that Marvel produces and enables our customers in the marketplace. And as their customers move from a traditional distributed RAN topology to some amounts of cloud RAN, some amounts of distributed RAN while keeping their, their, their core network alive, we are able to support all of those methodologies in, 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 inside of it. All the way out to a far edge um, uh, ORAN deployment uh, in, in, the, in, in, in a cloud uh, um, web scaler. And in terms of enabling the, the ecosystem, we partnered with a company called Analog Devices, which is a leader in RF technology to do a full integrated 32D, 32R reference design. It's implemented in the ORAN 7.2 split, which splits the L1 in, in, into radio head, lower and upper portions, as I said earlier, this comes complete with uh, the lower L1 software, as well as the form of software, and then all the radio software, as well as ONM and calibration for error recovery, user play, management of play, et cetera. And then we do a, a integrated um, DU, which does L1 and L2. This is a, a distributed RAN thing. And, and th 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 this has a full um, capability of doing 5G in a, in a single pizza box. There are a number of customers adopting this. And then lastly, but not least, we do a uh, uh, half height uh, uh, ORAN virtualized uh, DU uh, going into a server uh, with full uh, inline L1 and it just has an integrated frontal switch, has integrated peak speed timing, integrated um, uh, ORAN protocol on the front hall, uh, and as well as compression decompression, which is optional today, but of course will become part of the standard we hope later on. And if you look at where, what we're doing to, to power the network, as I said earlier, our customers like Samsung, Nokia, who've been with us for multiple generations of products, and Fujitsu and Facebook were newer to, to us, are using us for a whole bunch of different things. Different people are using us for different things, for radio networks, for radio units, massive MIMO IUs, the central unit, the, 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 the DU system, whether it's a PCI in a server or a standalone or uh, a rack mounted uh, thing. And of course, this eventually leads to, to operator field trials and POCs and lab testing and eventually commercial deployments. And, and um, certainly um, for a number of these, the 5G deployments have already happened and, and ca carry on and you can see the success of that in the marketplace of which we are very rightly proud. We're very, very proud to be associated with iconic companies like these to, to enable the, uh, the ecosystem and to enable them to bring this very innovative 5G technology to the, to the market. Thank you very much.